uh, in pockets around the country where okay. a Cornish population uh, emigrated to mining areas and like that, places in California, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, there's sort of a, a, a cadre, you might say, of uh, Cornish Americans that are teaching about it, that are doing Cornish things, the food, the music. Uh, but in the general right. population, there is practically no awareness of the Cornish identity. And really? And the thing is, um, well, you've probably all heard of an actress uh, named Christian Chenoweth. Christian Chenoweth. That's okay. a Cornish name. Wow. Um, you've heard of Jane Mansfield. Mm -hmm. She was of Cornish ancestry. Um, there is a, a wonderful comedian from years ago called Lord Buckley. Lord Buckley. Lord Buckley, yeah. who was half Cornish. Um, there are many people, the last poet laureate of the USA uh, was uh, of Cornish ancestry. Wow. But a lot of these people don't know it. Well, the, one of the biggest examples I give, I can't prove this uh, with genealogy, mm -hmm. but you picture the uh, Declaration of Independence. Okay. Picture the first name on it. Okay. John Hancock. Hancock is a Cornish name. Whoa. But nobody knows that. But see, yeah, I, no, yeah, I didn't know that. Samuel know Langhorn that. Clemens, uh -huh. Mark Twain. Clemens is a Cornish name. Really? It is. So people say, oh, wow, uh, how about that? But the thing is, it's very little known. People just don't know about that. And as far as things like promoting the culture, uh, that's what I try to do through the music. Ex right. But picture all of the people in the entire country North America, or the whole continent, yeah. Yeah. that play amateur or professional Irish music. That'd be, that's a lot, well, I would think. No? Think of them all getting together in one place. Okay. It'd have to be the Superdome. Wow. Right? Yeah. Now, not that long ago, there was a gathering of all of the people in the entire country who absolutely specialize in Cornish-themed music. It took place on a park bench in Mineral Point, Wisconsin, right. and on it were me and a lady named Marion Howard. We are the only <sighs> two people in North America who specialize in Cornish music. There are some other people that do occasionally play a Cornish tune and bless their hearts, but there are only two people on the entire continent who specialize in Cornish music. So it's a rough, it's, rough fight. It must be rough, but it must be a sense of pride for you. It is, and I'm glad to be able to do it. I'm glad to be the one who has sort of taken up the torch, uh, mm -hmm. if I may say so. But um, on the other hand, uh, when I have to go to the organizers of a Celtic fest and explain what Cornish music is. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, there's a, a Celtic fest that I won't name by name. Of course not. But they're, they're very, very big, and they're in Canada. Mm hmm and I've talked to them, not about booking me. I said, I don't care if you book me. No. But I've got friends over in Cornwall that would just absolutely blow your audience away. Why are you not booking these people? And they'll say, oh, because they don't really sound Celtic. What? Right, exactly. Their music doesn't go deedly, 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 deedly. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. No, no, no. But there are many types of Celtic music other exactly. than Irish jigs. But right. to a lot of people, that's Celtic music. That's what it is. Uh, and even a major Celtic fest would make that objection. We can't really bring them in because our audience wouldn't like them because they wouldn't think they sound Celtic, oh which is God. craziness. Yeah. But that's the sort of thing we run into all the time. Oh. That's just, that, oh, man. I, I'm glad that there's people out there like you. They're, they're changing these things. Well, trying to. Or we are, Well, <laughs> the worst thing you can do is not try. Well, it's true. Yeah. It's true. I remember you were saying originally, that uh, that you went uh, to Cornwall, yes. to Cornwall, and, vi mm -hmm. and visited over there. Um, so what, what's it what's it like? I mean, what's it like over there? Uh, very very nice. I have gotten to the point where now it's not just me staying in a hotel and going to the local sites. I stay with friends. Um, I go to events. I mean, there are places, there are pubs in Cornwall I can walk into and everybody would know me. It's like Norm walking into Cheers, Jim, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, people over there have said to me, you know, boy, you're Cornish. You're not, you're not, you're not an American. They treat me like I was a Cornish-born person visiting back in the old country. Temporarily living in America, come back home. They, they treat me like I am a Cornishman come home, which is wonderful. It warms my heart. Uh, but you'll find that being in Cornwall, if you're just living the ordinary life, is a lot like being anyplace else. You eat three meals a day and you go to work if you got a job. 
Uh, but on the other hand, uh, there are wonderful things there. Um, they have magnificent beaches. They, you can surf in Cornwall. There are palm trees in Cornwall. Ba it's a palm? subtropical climate. Oh, really? Because I, of the Gulf Stream. I, well, I think of the UK. I think of uh, nothing but, you know, rain. That's England. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, up see, in England. That's why I keep, I keep That's forgetting. up over in England. Right. Uh, but Cornwall, because of the Gulf Stream, is a subtropical climate, and we do have palm trees. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, I, I have got to take, I got I to gotta see some pictures of this. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that, uh, like, I know that before we before we go tonight, you'll probably be giving me all this information. So <laughs> if anybody needs to, you know, want, you know, I mean, I know when you think of vacation, you don't think you think of Hawaii or you think of Florida or, uh, or the. French I could show Riviera. you pictures of Cornwall that make you think you're in Hawaii oh, and no Florida. No kidding! You know, wow, I didn't palm trees. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't even, I wouldn't even have thought. Wow. But it's it's <clears> a wonderful <throat> place. Uh, it has its ups and downs, uh, but you can find ancient Celtic things, stone circles. Stones, yeah. Exactly. Wonderful ancient sites. Uh, there's archaeology all over the place. I've got a friend who's an expert archaeologist. And has shown me some of these places are breathtaking, and you can go up to things and touch them that are as old as the pyramids, and they're just sitting out in the middle of a field somewhere. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of wonderful things. There's great musical sessions and events uh, that take place all the time, um, and uh, yeah, it's just a, a very fun place to go. Now, what, what is a traditional dish in Cornwall? <laughs> uh, the national dish of Cornwall is the pasty. The pasty. Some people may have. Now, what is a pasty? A pasty is a, a case hardened, iron clad meat pie. Uh, you start with a circle of dough about like so. On half of it, you pile uh, chopped up steak, not ground beef, uh, potatoes, a little onion, a little turnip, fold it over, crimp it, and bake it. Uh, and it's sort of like an empanada or okay. a pierogi. pierogi. Everybody's got some sort of yeah. thing like that. These are usually large. Uh, it was a traditional meal of the working man, uh, especially miners. Uh, but the Cornish take great pride in their pasties. They have competitions. Now, and all why that. miners? Uh, my, well, uh, you could go off to the mine in the morning. Your, your wife would be up uh, uh, at like 2 a.m. to bake your pasty, and you would wrap it up in newspaper and put it in your jacket pocket, piping hot. And, Ouch. Right. Well, yeah. Ouch. Tough, they were tough guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, but when you got to your, your dinner time, your lunch break, you'd ra unwrap it and it would still be warm. Plus, the crimping around the edge, you could hold it by that and eat it kind of like this. Because down in the mines, you had no opportunity to wash up. Right. And some of the mine stuff that got in your hand contained like arsenic. Uh, yeah, and so they fun. would they would eat their pasta, and they have this little bit of crust left over, which they would just they would toss just, away. Yeah, don't. Uh, actually, they'd be leaving it as an offering for uh, the the uh, little people that lived in the uh -huh. mines. Uh, so miners ate them, and others did too, of course. But uh, the Cornish are very proud of their pasties and are very jealous of them. They uh, don't like <laughs> anybody else to try to make them. Yeah, so we just gave you half the recipe, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, we just gave you half the recipe. There you go. Now uh, we're running low on time. Mm -hmm. And I know, and there's so many things I want to keep asking, and that's why I feel so bad that it's only half an, half an hour show. But, like, um, like, do you have any, I mean, if you can just look into that camera over there and just like, just give, give out your information on, you know. Sure. Uh, uh, I've got uh, a website, www.jimwaren.com. That's J-I-M-W-E-A-R-N-E. Uh, I have music available on most of the download sites, things like uh, Amazon uh, and uh, iTunes. You can find CDs and individual songs to download. Please do. Uh, I'm not getting rich being a Cornish folk singer, I promise. <laughs> uh, so, That's more of a public service than I guess. Well, pretty uh, much. Exactly. But yeah, mm -hmm. they're just my name, Jim, W-E-A-R-N-E. -E. You'll find it. There aren't very many of us around. So you can Google that name and you'll find lots about me. Now, you're going to leave us with a song, right? Yes, yeah, so it's called The White Rose. It's a very old song. It's a traditional song. I didn't write it. Uh, and uh, it has many different verses. I do three. Every different town would have its own verses. But it's just a very old, not necessarily um, Irish jig type of Celtic song, but it is Celtic music of a different sort. And now, one last song with my good friend, Jim Wern. <laughs> I love the white rose in its splendor I love the white rose in its blue I love the white rose 
As fair as it grows, it's the rose that reminds me of you. You're fair as the spring, oh my darling. Your face shines so bright, so divine. As clear as the blue of the sky, love. Oh, lily white rose, you are mine. And I love the white rose in its splendor. I love the white rose in its bloom. I love the white rose as fair as it grows. It's the rose that reminds me of you. The first time I met you, my darling, your face was as pale as the rose. But now your dear face has grown paler, as pale as the lily white rose. And I love the white rose in its splendor. I love the white rose in its bloom. I love the white rose as fair as it grows. It's the rose that reminds me of you. The years pass so swiftly, my darling. Each makes you more precious to me. Long may we live close together. Oh, lily white rose, cling to me. And I love the white rose in its splendor. I love the white rose in its bloom. I love the white rose, as fair as it grows, it's the rose that reminds me of you. I love the white rose, as fair as it grows, it's the rose that reminds me of you. That's all the time we have for The Sunny Brightly Show. Uh, if you want more information on the show, go to facebook.com slash The Sunny Brightly Show or go to our website, uh, www.sunnybrightlyshow.com. Uh, leave a comment. Let us know how horrible or how good we are. Uh, you can even leave comments for my good friend Jim or any of our, other of our guests. So in the meantime, don't <laughs> remember, there can only be one Sunny Brightly, but don't let that stop you from trying.